All right. Hello, everybody. We're going to talk about blood types today, um, and I'm going to show you how to do some blood type Punnett squares. You're going to have some Punnett square problems um, to do, and so you just need to know a little bit about blood types. So I want you to think really quickly about what are the blood types that you've ever heard of. So I'm going to write it down. What are, oops, I need to be writing. That helps. There we go. All right. What are blood types that you have heard of? I want you to think about it. So most people have heard of type A and type B and type AB. And then some people have heard of type O. All right, so those are all different types of blood. And what um, is happening with those different types of blood, you have on the outside of your blood cell. So that's a picture of a blood cell. Blood cells have kind of a funny look to them. And on the outside, they have different proteins. Some of them have a very fancy protein that's called the A protein. Yeah, scientists were really creative. And so when you're... Um, Oops, that's supposed to be an A there. Okay, so that identifies you as you and you having type A blood. A person who has type B blood, hmm, they have B proteins on the outside of their blood cells. And a person who has type AB blood actually has both. So they have both types of proteins on the outside. Now, I'll let you guess for a second. What type of um, proteins does somebody who has type O have? They don't have any. So their red blood cells are just naked red blood cells without any, um, any of the proteins on the outside. And that's super important because your immune system, um, you have these white blood cells. These are red blood cells. You have white blood cells that travel around your body and they're always touching all of the cells of your body. And they're touching the proteins on the outside of the cells of all of your body, not just the red blood cells, but they're touching the cells of your liver and they're touching the cells of your skin and they're touching the cells of your tongue and they're whatever. And they're looking for anything that has a foreign protein. And usually that works really well because a foreign protein is often something that causes disease. So a bacteria would have foreign proteins on the outside or a virus has foreign proteins on the outside. So white blood cells attack things that are foreign and that does really well for us. The time that that comes into problem is when we do a, a like a blood transfusion. Let's say I get into a car accident and I have type A blood and one of my students says, oh, okay, Jay, I'll, um, I'll donate blood to you. I know you're, it's an emergency, emergency situation and they donate type B blood to me. Well, my body is going to recognize those B proteins. It's going to touch them and it's going to be like, attack, there's a foreign invader. And so I was in a car accident and I'm losing a lot of blood and I'm really ill. And my immune system, instead of trying to heal me, is attacking the type B blood that my student gave me um, and my condition gets worse and I might even die from it. Um, so it's really important that if I have type A blood that you give me type A blood except there's one other type of blood that you could give me. What other type of blood could you give me? It turns out you could give me type O blood, and I'm just going to write the O in here. You could give me type O blood because there are no proteins on the outside for the white blood cells to identify as foreign. So I could get type A or type O blood. If I was type B, I could get B or O blood. If I was type AB, I could get A blood, I could get B blood, I could get AB blood, or I could get type O blood. If I'm type AB, any kind of blood works for me because all of them look familiar and there's nothing for my white blood cells to reject. Now here's where it gets bad or good. Type O blood, this is bad. Type O blood, everything, all those proteins are foreign. So the only type of blood that type O patients can get is type O blood. So that means that there's not very many varieties for them. But on the opposite end, type O blood is wonderful to have if you're willing to be a blood donor. So we want, as we want all types of blood, but especially folks that have type A blood, type O blood, um, because everybody can take their blood. So it doesn't matter if I'm A or B or AB or O, I can accept type O blood. All right, so that's kind of the background information about um, the blood types. Now, let's see if I can make some of this go away. Yeah, we'll just really quickly erase all that. Um, a, the reason that they're called, whoops, the reason that they're called A, B, A, B, and O. A, B are two dominant genes, so they're called codominant. 
So if you get an A from one parent and you get a B from the other parent, instead of one hiding the other, that's what happens with um, a dominant and a recessive gene, they both show up. So you get type AB blood. Type O, the O gene is actually recessive. And for O, we have to make it I'm going to make it as little as I can, a lowercase o. So anytime that we do a Punnett square with type O blood, it needs to be a little o. The type A and type B are always capital A and B. Never, ever, ever, listen carefully, never, ever, ever, when it comes to blood types, will you use a lowercase a or a lowercase b. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a recessive A gene or a recessive B gene for blood types. Now, there might be for something else, but not for blood types. All right, so let's go ahead and try a Punnett square, a, a kind of a basic Punnett square problem. And I didn't think of it ahead of time, but let's just see what I can do. So let's draw the Punnett square. And let's say we have one parent. I'm going to make it as hard as I can think of. Let's say we have one parent that is heterozygous for type A blood. And we have another parent that is homozygous for type B blood. What are the odds that they'll have a type AB baby? I don't know. Okay, so heterozygous for type A. Well, we know they're going to have a capital A because they have type A. But to be hetero, if we made it a B, then they wouldn't be type A blood. They'd be type AB blood. So to be hetero, they have to have the little itty bitty recessive O. That's heterozygous for type A blood. And then I said the other parent was um, homozygous um, B. So they were homozygous for type B. So homo means two of the same. So that's two capital Bs. So we go ahead and fill it in. We've got AB, AB, B-O and B-O. So I ask, what are the odds of having a child? If this couple had kids, what are the odds that they would have a kid that would be A-B? And you would say 50% or two out of four kids or half of the kids would be type A-B. Is it possible? So the, the one of the parents is type A. Is it possible for this family to have type A children? not possible because the, the parent here that's always donating a capital B, that's a dominant trait and that will always show up. And so they cannot ever have just type A kids. All right. Hopefully that's enough to get you started. Let me know if you have any questions um, and good luck on your Punnett Square assignment. Oops, I got to figure out how to turn this off. I don't really know how to turn it off. There we go.